Today we're going to build a scene from recording to editing and finally assembling the finished product. The scene is from Alice in Wonderland, my next audiobook, and will be helped by Jet, who plays the lead role. We've read the text and noted down three immediately important things. The tone of the story, a list of characters, and the size of their parts. Normally I would go on now to pick character voices, but in Alice that wasn't such a big thing as most of the roles were played by other actors. I record using Audacity, nice free software which absolutely does the job every time. I take my editing over to SoundForge for most of it, and some other programs for some specific jobs. My mic is Yeti Blue, which suffices for the most part. In recording, quality is key. Don't rush anything. Everything you can get right while recording will save you ten times as much time trying to fix it in post. If you have access to a studio, great, but if not, you can generally find some time and place in your home where most background noise is tolerable. Once you've found your spot, I have some mic tips for you. First, get up nice and close to the mic. I cannot stress this enough. All the warmth in your voice is contained really close to the lips, so get up close and personal with that mic. Second, turn your headphones way up so you can hear everything the mic picks up. Third, prepare yourself to learn the horrible truth. We are all disgusting slobber beasts, our unceasing mouths always clicking, slurping, popping, and all the other revolting sounds made by our primitive simian tongues writhing around in our gross mouths. Jet is going to go into this in more detail, and she even has a nice tip for dealing with the desert mouth, so I'll stop there. I just wanted to point out how gross we are before we go on. So, now to the actual text. I'm going to deliberately add three errors so we can fix them later. Some over-breathing, a timing error, and a flubbed line. Very soon, the rabbit noticed Alice as she went hunting about, and called out to her in an angry tone, Why, Marianne, what are you doing out here? Run home this moment and fetch me a pair of gloves and a fan. Quick now! And... Alice was so much frightened that she ran off at once in the direction it pointed to, without trying to explain the mistake that it had made. He took me for his housewife. Oh, blah, blah. He took me for his housemaid, she said to herself as she ran. How surprised he'll be when he finds out who I am. But I'd better take him his fan and gloves. That is, if I can find them. Now that we have the master recording, on to the thriller minute world of hours and hours of editing. Yay. First, copy your files. I keep a master file, a copy of the master file, both untouched, an editing copy of the master file, and a copy of the editing copy. I make sure I save to both working files after every minute of finished product, and have the autosave turned on and set to as frequent saves as I can get. This may seem OTT to you, but trust me, you do not want to lose eight hours of work because of a corrupted file. Next, silence is your friend. Background noise and filthy actors breathing with their noisy monkey lungs are the enemy. If you're lucky, most of this noise is handled in recording, otherwise you have to fix it here in post. I'll do a more detailed editing video with tips and tricks later. Now that job's done, I send this master file over to Jet. And she takes it from here. Oh, message from Steve. Hello, I'm Jet, and I'm going to show you a little bit about what I see from my perspective. Steve sends his edit of the file through Dropbox. I load up the file in Premiere Pro, and also a copy of the text that I'll be reading along with. I listen to the entire recording, and as I go, I chop out all of the bits that Alice will need to read. He took me for his housemaid, she said to herself as she ran but I'd better take him his fan and gloves, that is, if I can find them. By separating Alice's lines into a different track, I can easily spot where I need to do my recording. I then mute that channel so I don't get confused, and I also have a visual indicator of the pace. Now, let's record. He took me for his housemaid. What's great about having Steve's skeleton audio to work with is I can double-check to see if my lines fit neatly. He took me for his housemaid. She said to herself as she ran. If it doesn't sit right nicely, I tend to re-record, and that can happen several times. He took me for his housemaid. He took me for his housemaid. 
That first one had a definite pop to it, so I won't be using that, but the second one seems to be okay. Let's slide that in. He took me for his housemaid, she said to herself as she ran. I then trim, cut out breathing, pops and all kinds of things, until I'm left with a completed chapter. One of the hardest things to combat, which accounts for so many re-recordings of my work, is the dreaded... Now there's a new name for terror. I haven't been too pedantic with it this recording session. However, with Alice, I found myself taking a swig of apple cider vinegar at the beginning of each recording session. Just a small sip, slushing it around my tongue and then spitting it out. It's best not to swallow it as it tends to irritate the vocal cords a little bit and can reduce the amount of time that you can record your voice consistently. You could also try wiping your tongue with a tea towel, drinking and gargling some water, and a combination of all three does a pretty good job of it. Now, recording out the way, it's time to export Alice's lines into a WAV file document and open it up in Audacity. It's pretty simple what I do here. I sample some ambient background noise, get a profile using the noise suppression tool, and apply it to the rest of the track. The next step is to truncate. All that does is clip out all of the silences between Alice's lines to create a smaller file. Once that's done, it's ready to send over to Steve so that he can continue with the edit. So, that's the basics of my perspective. Jet signing out. Back to you, Steve. And now I begin to assemble the cast recordings. For the most part, it's simple cut and paste. Sometimes you have multiple versions of a line and you have to choose which one fits best, but honestly, this is pretty straightforward. For the last part, any video editing software should do the job. Just as long as you can easily see what you are putting where and how long it lasts, you'll be fine. I start with the musical theme of the book. In this case, it's a little guitar piece I wrote. For 1984, it was Cryogenic Hypersleep by Jet, which you can find on my YouTube page in the Channel Contributors playlist. Then we lay on the voiceover file. Now we set the scene with a sound bed. In this case, we are underground. What on earth is the sound of being underground? Being underground has a definite feel, a thick, heavy darkness, a stillness which is very visceral, but not particularly audible. Fortunately, in this case, the tunnel is lit by gas lamps, so we can use that in the sound bed. We'll add some other sounds for detail, perhaps some falling rocks, shifting dirt, just something to make the bed more interesting without being distracting. This scene is fairly simple though, and the bed is quickly done, so we move on to foley work, my favourite. Alice is hunting about for something, and we have to show her footsteps. A few steps here, a few steps there, hunting around looking at things. Soon enough, she is interrupted by the white rabbit, so Alice stops looking around. One final footstep out of beat with the others shows her stop walking quite nicely. The rabbit delivers his line, and Alice goes running off. We add bare feet running on grass, which is pretty close to what we want, and that's it for this small scene. We export a test version of the audio and listen to it with notepad ready to keep track of things you want to change or fix. Repeat the process until you're happy, then export the final version of the chapter into audio files, both with and without sound effects. Now, I personally feel my art is best represented with the full range of sound and music, but some find the sound effects distracting, so I provide them with the option of a naked version should they want it. I then add the thumbnail art, in this case provided by the extremely talented Julian Cordoni, who also did the art for 1984 and The Call of Cthulhu. Then I export the video files for YouTube. Now obviously this was a pretty loose overview of the process, but I wanted to show you what it looks like from start to finish. Uh, I will make more how-to videos in the future for as long as you want to see them. Uh, so let me know in the comments if there are specific things you'd like covered. Thanks very much to Jet for helping out with this video and contributing her bit. Uh, I very much look forward to uh, the release of Alice in Wonderland, which will start up very, very shortly. Basically, as soon as 1984 is finished, Alice in Wonderland will start up. Thank you very much for listening to my audiobooks and your interest in general. I'll see you around. Very soon, the rabbit noticed Alice as she went hunting about and called out to her in an angry tone. Why, Mary Ann, what are you doing out here? Run home this moment and fetch me a pair of gloves and a fan. Quick now. And Alice was so much frightened that she ran off at once in the direction it pointed to, without trying to explain the mistake that it had made. He took 
me for his housemaid, she said to herself as she ran. How surprised he'll be when he finds out who I am. But I'd better take him his fan and gloves. That is, if I can find them.